Alright lovely people, I hope you enjoyed the last few videos because this is where it all comes together. Now, I've had experience putting on haunted houses, being in haunted houses, and going through haunted houses. So I'm here to tell you either how to put on a great haunted house, or if you have high anxiety and your friends drag you to one, I'm gonna let you know what to expect. The first step to having a successful haunted house is having a story to tell. Now, this isn't a requirement, but it will help achieve the immersion of your audience. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate story. In fact, short, sweet, and simple is probably even better. It really helps if you can include some local folklore, or if there isn't any, make some up. But mostly when I mean have a story to tell, I mean keep your theme consistent. If your theme is going to be zombies, you can't have one area be the apocalypse and the next be a creepy carnival. Unless you have zombie clowns, then I guess you can make that work. True that. Besides the backstory, another prerequisite can be knowing your audience, and more specifically, how far you're going to take things. If you know your audience is mostly going to be little kids, you're probably going to want to tone it down on the gore and the general scariness. While making kids cry is a lot of fun, trust me, I would know, having parents yell at you isn't. But if you have an older audience, feel free to go all out because making an adult cry has less consequences. Another good idea before making your own haunted house is to go to some. Find out what works and what doesn't. Now moving on to the actual setup. The number one piece of advice I can give is misdirection. Take advantage of people's curiosity. Sounds cruel, but we're here to scare people, not make friends. And this can play into the second biggest tip, which is minimal lighting. When nearly everything is dark, your mind will start to play tricks on you. Yeah, I'm kind of a jerk like that. Yeah, you really are. Like I've ever denied it. Anyway, once you put someone into complete darkness, their first instinct is to seek out light. No, not you! For those of you watching this to cheat the system, any small patch of light or a small scene is most likely going to be a false blessing as this is an opportune time for jump scares. Let me demonstrate. Here you have your victim, I mean audience, stumbling around in the dark. But behold! They can finally see something in the distance which will give them bearings to their surroundings. While they are distracted by this moment of hope, it would be very easy for someone to sneak up from behind and... And just like that, you've crushed someone's sense of trust and their belief in kindness and humanity. Another thing to consider with misdirection is assaulting the senses. Once their line of sight is focused on something else, now is the time to bombard their sense of touch, sound, and sometimes even smell. Or else I would not recommend taste, otherwise that might result in a lawsuit. Now while most professional attractions don't actually allow the actors to touch the audience members, they do find ways around this, the most common being a blast of air. This is actually usually twice as effective because air cannons are also very loud. Same goes for chainsaws, but just make sure you remove the chain first. Like I said before, lawsuits are no fun. But I was actually in a haunted house once where the guy with the chainsaw actually put the saw on these wooden steps that everybody was going up and made everything shake. Let's just say it was very effective. While misdirection is a fairly simple concept, it's actually really hard to pull off if you don't have anyone to help you. Now, most professional attractions will hire actors or have volunteers, but if you're doing this on your own, then it's probably best to grab a few energetic friends or bribe some family members. Now, more often than not, beggars can't be choosers, but if you can, make sure that your actors can actually take cues and can at least try to be convincing. So it helps to run through it a few times and practice before actually starting the real show. If they need any pointers, feel free to show them my How To Be Creepy video, which I will link down below. <laughs> well, no one else is gonna do it! Now, having good actors alone can provide some decent scares, but if you really want to seal a deal, I would invest in some costumes and some makeup. And I just did some really easy DIY zombie makeup tutorials, so I'll link those down below too. Yes, I know. Fair warning when it comes to gore makeup, or just gore in general. Refrain from using it as your main scare tactic. As weird as it sounds, use a tasteful amount of blood. Overdoing it will just desensitize your audience faster. And this might just be me, but whenever I see an excessive amount of gore in haunted houses and horror movies, I just feel like it's a cop-out. Are you going for scares or shock value? Because they are two very different things. And if you're just starting out, don't worry about getting the expensive special effects and the crazy animatronics. I've been doing this for years and I still don't have any of that stuff, but the longer you keep at it, you will eventually accumulate more and more props and experience. This is why I always find it's a good idea to go to clearance after Halloween ends because all the props are a lot cheaper and you can use them next year. And as cool as those animatronics are, they can't always beat the real thing. One final word of advice, which I believe is the most important, is to stay safe. 
Some people's first reaction when they get scared is fight instead of flight. I've heard plenty of stories of actors getting punched in the face after a scare, I've had friends get kicked before, and I'm pretty sure I've been stepped on a few times. And most of these people don't actually mean any harm, but I would be lying if I said that there weren't people out there who were just seeing an excuse to get violent. So no matter what side of the scare you're on, just remember to be careful. But overall, just try to have fun with it and be creative with it. What are some things that people find scary that you don't often find in haunted houses? Being unique when it comes to nightmare fuel will definitely make people remember you. But if you have any haunted house experience, or you have any funny stories to tell, feel free to leave them down below. I seriously love reading your guys' comments. That is all I have for you today, so happy haunting, and I will see you next time. Bye! And one thing I forgot to mention, any haunted attraction, especially haunted corn mazes, if you use a flashlight or a cell phone, you will become an instant target. Ah! Well, for all you zombie posers out there, worry not, for I have the solution! And it doesn't involve you having to go out and buying an expensive zombie arm! Why do I have an expensive zombie arm? Well, reasons.